Out of all the cards with insert color eyes card, what even is galaxy eyes? Galactic eyes that see space? Eyes that look like a galaxy? Whatever it is, it certainly doesn't mean it's a successful archetype. Konami has been supplying great value blue eyes for support for over a decade, and the deck has had little to show for it outside of being an incredible deck to play at your locals. With 184 billion XCs given to the deck, and easy access to make rank 8s, it's honestly surprising the archetype hasn't impacted any of the metas. Well, it doesn't help that the archetype support is split between Galaxy, Photon, and even Cypher monsters for who knows what. So what stalled the Galaxy Eyes from becoming a beast? You'll find out in today's video why Galaxy Eyes became an astronomical flop. We can trace the beginning of this archetype's failed journey back to 2011, when they debuted in Photon Shockwave around the beginning of the Xyz era. You can already guess the cover card for a set called Photon Shockwave. Galaxy Eye's Photon Dragon was a level 8 light dragon with 3000 attack and 2500 defense. You can spell to summon this card by attributing two monsters with 2000 or higher attack. During the battle step, when this card battles an opponent's monster, you can use its quick effect to target it and banish it and the other monster, then return both those monsters at the end of the battle phase. If it was an Xyz monster it battled, this card gains 500 attack for every Xyz material that was attached to that monster. Though Galaxy Eye's Photon Dragon's effect was based on succeeding against Xyz, it wasn't all that powerful. One cool aspect of the card is its effect being live during the battle step, which meant it could respond to card effects that activated in the battle step, like Mirror Force or Dimensional Prison on Attack Declaration. Its effect would allow you to dodge that card and banish your opponent's monster. However, in most cases, the effect wasn't impactful, as simply removing this card using cards outside of the battle phase, like Bottomless Trap Hole or Solemn Warning, makes the summoning of Galaxy Eye's Photon Dragon completely ineffective. What made it even worse with this effect was slowly being power creeped out due to the introduction of other types of extra deck monsters and the battle phase effects becoming slow and unplayable. Even its special summoning conditions became a minus, as you essentially gave your two 2000 plus beat sticks for a not so good 3000 attack beat stick. So as more cards came out to support our great value blue eyes, the more it became a brick inside the deck. Just being 3000 attack doesn't cut it anymore in our expensive children's card game. What didn't help this card shine even more on Galaxy S Photon Dragon's debut was the mid monsters and spells that came with it. Photon Cerberus was a level 3 light beast that stopped both players from activating trap cards on the same turn it was normal summoned. Photon Saber Tiger was a level 3 light beast that added another Photon Saber Tiger from your deck to your hand on normal or flip summon. But it loses 800 attack if you don't control another Photon Saber Tiger. There weren't many monsters for photons to work with that were introduced. Also, it didn't help that one Photon Saber Tiger was the only Photon monster with 2000 or more attack, and it couldn't even keep it unless you owned another one. Already, it's tough enough to special summon a Galaxy's Photon Dragon and get any value. The spells were also a mixed bag. Photon Lead was a quick play that special summons a level 4 lower light monster in face-up attack position from your hand. Photon Booster was a normal spell that lets you target one light monster in the field that's not a token, and all monsters that have that targeted monster's name become 2000 attack until the end of the turn. Finally, Photon Veil was their searcher that shuffled three light monsters from your hand into your deck, then you can add up to three level 4 or lower light monsters from your deck to your hand. If you added more than two or more monsters, they must have the same name though. Photon Veil was too restrictive to consider running, and would make you go minus one. The fact that you're stuck grabbing the same named monsters if you wanted to add more than two light monsters already limits your choices what you can even grab or not. You couldn't even grab your boss monster either. Photon Lead had a little bit more playability, but that doesn't help with cards that needed their effects through normal summoning. Both Cerberus and Tiger can't get their effects through being summoned off of Lead. Nothing starts a great video of failed cards and mechanics, by seeing an archetype struggling to summon its boss monster. However, it's fair to say that unlike other archetypes, the support for a galactic archetype began to improve. Order of Chaos gave the deck more main deck monsters to work with in 2012. Photon Thrasher and Photon Crusher would be headlined as the best support for them. Both Crusher and Thrasher were light level 4 warriors. Thrasher must first be special summoned if you control no monsters, but can't attack if you control another monster and Crusher changed the defense mode after attacking at the end of the damage step. Both of these cards made it easy to get out Galaxy's Photon Dragon in the field, as they were both over 2000 attack, and by simply bringing Thrash out first, you can play Crusher to follow up and then special summon GP to the field. Was it consistent? Absolutely not. In fact, Thrasher was used in more consistent strategies besides Galaxy Eyes. It was a Cyber Dragon without waiting for your opponent to have a monster on the field. This made Thrasher great for toolbox decks that cranked out rank 4's XCs, and decks that utilize it as a resource like Heroes and even Shed Alls. It was also searchable by Rota, making it searchable and consistent support for players to have access to. More cards revolving around Photons were added in Order of Chaos, 
but they were either poorly designed or useless to the archetype. Photon Lizard could be attributed to add a level 4 or lower Photon monster from deck to hand. Photon Leo was level 6 that shuffled your opponent's hand back into the deck, and then made your opponent draw the same number of cards they shuffled when normal summoned. Photon Circle halved any battle damage you took involving this card. Twin Photon Dragon was a fusion monster that took two Photon monsters to make, and by attributing it, you can special summon both fusion materials used to make the monster. They even got spells in Galaxy Storm and Galaxy Wave. Galaxy Storm targeted one Xyz monster in the field with no materials and destroyed it, while Galaxy Wave was a continuous that inflicted 500 damage to your opponent each time you Xyz summoned. Every card that isn't named Thrasher or Crusher was in bulk piles in our card bins. They didn't help extend your plays, didn't combo at all, and had insufficient effects to help the archetype. It's as if an already inconsistent deck needs to splash in polymerization cards to make a fusion with no way of getting to a polymerization. If this deck wanted to compete, it needed stronger searchers and a consistent engine to play. And as you know, that didn't come until much later in the archetype's history. For now, all they had to show was Thrasher's usefulness in toolbox decks. The support train wasn't even close to finishing up, however. Not when Kite was carrying the Yu-Gi-Oh's Excel series. The archetype continued to get more cards. In 2012 Premium 10, three new cards were placed there to boost our Galactic Dragon's playability. Photon Wavern was the only monster given this time. It was a level 7 Dragon Effect monster that destroyed all set cards your opponent controls when it was normal or flip summoned. All Wavern did was be a monster that needed to be tributed for, be level 7, and eat up your normal summon. So no, this card didn't see play. The spell and trap cards introduced were Photon Sanctuary and Photon Current. Sanctuary special summoned two level 4 Photon tokens to your side of the field with 2000 attack and defense position. They couldn't attack or be used as secret materials and locked you into light monsters for the rest of the turn. Current lets you target one light dragon you control that is targeted for an attack and have it gain attack equal to the attacking monster's attack until the end of the damage step. Sanctuary wins the award for being the playable of all three cards. The tokens helped save resources on special summoning galaxy eyes. You could play out your Thrashers and Crushers, then Sanctuary for tokens, giving you access to a 3000 attacker and a rank 4 Light Xyz. It also put two bodies on the board to help you summon non-archetype extenders like Guardian of Light, giving you access to rank 8s as well. This card was consistently played in the deck, even though the Link format proving once and for all that no matter what happens, tokens will be abused through the land of Yu-Gi-Oh if they can be exploited. Nonetheless, they got a solid spell out of the premium tint. The ride continued in Galactic Overlord in May of 2012, where they would see three Xyz don the Photon Mantle. Photon Papilla Imperative was a rank 4 warrior Xyz that took two warrior monsters to make. Once per turn, you can detach one material to target one face down defense position monster on the field and change it to face up attack position, and that monster loses 600 attack. Photon Strike Bouncer was a rank 6 warrior that took two level 6 monsters to make. During either player's turn, when a monster effect is activated, you can detach a material from the card to negate the monster and inflict 1000 damage to your opponent. Finally, the big reveal of Neo Galaxy Eyes Photon Dragon, a rank 8 light dragon that took 3 level 8s to make. When XC summoned using a Galaxy Eyes Photon Dragon as a material, negate the effects of all other face-up cards currently on the field. Once per turn, you can detach material from this card to detach materials from all of your opponent's monsters to have this card gain 500 attack for each material detached. It also gains an attack on how many materials were detached by this effect. Now, would you believe us that out of all of the cards given to this archetype, the only card that saw a bit of play was Papilla Imperative, due to being the only makeable card. The archetype only had Leo as its level 6 monster, making it nigh impossible to make bonds there. And it produced level 8 options far too slowly to make Neo Galaxy Ice Dragon. Papilla Imperative was always just a crusher and thrasher away, even though it had a mediocre effect. Bouncers saw a lot of play in meta decks like Insectors, Chaos Dragons, and even Monarchs. Galaxy Ice didn't see any new play with the new support, mostly due to cheaper options, as we'll see later. With the lackluster results, we move on to another one seen in the TCG set, Return of the Duelist. Photon Caesar was a level 8 light warrior monster that special summoned another Photon Caesar from the hand or deck when it was normal summon or flip summon. This card saw no play. Eating up your normal summon via tribute summoning was just too slow to run. If the goal was to help Galaxy make rank 8 Xyz, they needed a way for the archetype to consistently get level 8s on the field. Cosmo Blazer didn't help with that at all. Here are some Yu-Gi-Oh side characters in card form. Orbital 7 was a level 4 light machine monster that received a You Got It boss counter when it was foot face up. But when it does, its attack becomes 2000, it can't attack your opponent directly, and it's sent to the graveyard during the end phase. You can tribute this monster to target a Photon or Galaxy monster from your grave and add it to your hand. Lilybot was also a level 4 light monster, that when normal summoner flip face up, could target an orbital 7 in your graveyard and special summon it face up attack position or face down defense position. 
Lilybot also lets you attribute any number of machine type monsters to special summon the same number of photon monsters from your hand. Though both cards offered great effects of recovery and special summoning, they weren't runnable because they were unsearchable and ate up your normal summons. They weren't deemed necessary cards to the deck and served a better time being comedy relief and helping Kite track down number monsters. Things did take a turn in the right direction for Galaxy Eyes in the 2013 Zexal 10. It also began main deck Galaxy support, though Photon Monsters were still introduced. Photon Pirate was a level 3 machine monster that can gain a thousand attack up to twice per turn by banishing a Photon Monster from your graveyard. Photon Satellite was a level 1 machine monster that you could target one of the Photon Monsters you control to change that monster and this card's level to their combined level once per turn. Photon Slasher was a level 5 warrior monster that could be special summoned from your hand to your side of the field in face-up defense position if there's an Xyz monster on the field. Kari Photon rounds out the Photon monsters. Once per turn, you can use Quick Effect to send it from your hand to the graveyard and pay 2,000 light points to prevent you from taking any battle damage this turn. If it's in your grave, you can send a Photon monster except Kari Photon from your hand to the grave to add it back to your hand. Do all of these cards seem bad? That's because they kind of are. Don't worry because you'll forget all these cards exist. Just focus on the Galaxy support introduced. Galaxy Wizard was a level 4 spellcaster that could increase its level by 4 until the end of the turn. You can also attribute it to add a Galaxy monster from your deck to your hand. Galaxy Knight was a level 8 warrior. If you controlled a Galaxy or Photon monster, you could normal summon this card without tributing. If summoned this way, it could special summon Galaxy's Photon Dragon from your graveyard and lose a thousand attack. And to solidify how good the Galaxy cards were, Galaxy Expedition was a normal spell card that could special summon a level 5 or higher Galaxy or Photon monster if you controlled a Galaxy or Photon monster. Galaxy Zero is an equip spell that targets a Photon or Galaxy monster in the grave and special summons in attack position. That monster is equipped with this card and can't attack or activate its effects. If that monster is destroyed by a battle or card effect, you can send this card to the graveyard instead. If this card leaves the field, the monster's attack becomes zero. There was also Excel Light, a normal spell which special summons a level 4 or lower Galaxy or Photon monster from your deck, but you can't normal summon or set during the turn to activate this card. Wizard was the best starter for the deck. Its ability to go from level 4 to 8 was astronomical giving it synergy with use with Expedition and fetching Galaxy Eyes Photon Dragon. And if anything, it can be a searcher for Galaxy Eyes Photon Dragon, Galaxy Knight, Expedition, or Zero. Galaxy Knight was also solid, reviving your GPD to make a Rank 8 monster. The only issue was that there weren't many Rank 8s to make outside of Neo Galaxy Eyes, and that was tough still to bring out even with the new support. Luckily for them, a Rank 8 well inside their galaxy would come out soon, pun intended. Konami continued its campaign to try to make Galaxy Eyes great in a set fittingly named Lord of the Tachyon Galaxy on May 17th, 2013. You know what would have been disappointing? If only one card from the set was Galaxy's apart, and Konami did just that. At least their new card was the cover card, number 107, Galaxy Eyes Tachyon Dragon, which was a rank 8 light dragon that took two level 8 monsters to make. At the start of the battle phase, once per turn, you can detach a material to gate all other face-up monsters in the field, and have their attack and defense become their original attack and defense. Also, when you activate this effect in the battle phase, if your opponent's effects resolve, this card gains a thousand attack until the end of the battle phase, and you can make a second attack during each battle phase. By no means does this card effect scream tier 1 help for Galaxy Eyes. If anything, this card only saw play because there was just slim pickings when it came to rank 8 XCs to use at the time. Add in the fact that most of the rank 8s were too specific, gimmicky, or cost a lot to be made, and you'd realize that you almost had no choice but to run Tachyon Dragon. Tachyon Dragon and Heliopolis were the only two rank 8s to see meta play until more generic and better rank 8s came along later, like Divine Dragon Knight Felgrand or Gimmick Puppet Giant Grinder. This goes double for Galaxy Eyes as this card faded out when new Galaxy's XCs emerged. However, this card didn't fix the issue that Galaxy Eyes still had. Galaxy only had one starter and wizard, and the deck could only make inconsistent boards. The next support card for the deck came out in Judgment of Light. Galaxy Serpent was a level 2 normal tuner. Why? Who knows? Galaxy did get a new XCs, however. Star Leech Lord Galaxion was a rank 4 XCs that required two photon monsters. You can detach up to two materials to apply an effect based on the number of materials detached. If one, special summon a GPD from your hand. If two, special summon it from your deck. Galaxion made a good card to fall back on if your based combos didn't go as planned. What limited this card from being great was its requirement to make it was photon monsters, so you couldn't use Galaxy Wizard as material if you had any of the level 4s in play like Thrasher. However, the card was used in the same case as Galaxy Eyes Tachyon Dragon until other options were available. It was now Legacy of the Valiant's turn to give Galaxy Eyes some love. Unfortunately, the love was just giving it more bad cards. Luminous Dragon Ritual was a ritual spell that used a special summon Paladin of Photon Dragon by attributing monsters whose levels equals exactly 4. You can banish it from your grave to banish monsters whose levels equal exactly 4 to special summon Paladin of Photon Dragon from your hand. 
Pounded Photon Dragon was a level 4 light ritual monster, which you contribute to special summon AGEPD from your hand or deck. And when this card destroys the monster by battle and sends it to the graveyard, you can draw one card. The third and final card was Photon Charge Man. Once per turn, you can double the monster's attack until your next standby phase, but it can't attack the turn you activate this effect. It's just a tradition for every Eyes Dragon Monster to have a Paladin Ritual Monster that never sees any play. Luminous Dragon Ritual wasn't searchable and was tricked with the condition that your tributes had to be exactly for, which doesn't work with a deck that runs level 8 monsters. Charge Man was also another bad level 4. The effect was negatable, even if it went off, you couldn't attack with it. Thrash, Wizard, and even Crusher were still the go-to options if you wanted to summon level 4s. Needless to say, the support was forgettable. The same can't be said for some of the support it gained in Primal Origin in May of 2014. In Primal Origin, 7 new cards were given to the archetype. Galaxy Tyranno was a level 8 light dinosaur. When a Galaxy Monster Control is targeted for an attack, you can special summon this card in defense position. If summoned this way, you can immediately XC summon one Galaxy Monster using only Galaxy Monsters you control. Galaxy Mirror Sage was a level 3 light spellcaster, which gives you 500 life points for each Galaxy Monster in your graveyard when flip face up. When this card is destroyed, you can special summon one level 4 lower Galaxy Monster from your deck or graveyard in face down defense position, but banish it when it leaves the field. Galaxy Dragon was a level 4, well, Dragon, that cannot attack directly and can only attack Dragon type monsters. If it battles a Dragon type, it gains 1000 attack during the damage step only. That monster also has its effects negated during the battle phase as long as this card is on the field. The two XC's monsters they received were number 62 Galaxy Eyes Prime Photon Dragon and number C107 Neo Galaxy Eyes Tachyon Dragon. Galaxy Eyes Prime Photon Dragon was a rank 8 that took two level 8 monsters to make. If this card battles during the damage calculation, you can use its quick effect to detach one material from this card once per battle to have this card gain attack equal to combined ranks of all XC's monsters currently in the field times 200 during damage calculation only. If an opponent's card effect destroys this card in its owner's control while it has Galaxy Eyes Photon Dragon's material, you can special summon this card to do it in your second standby phase after activation and double its attack. Any battle damage this card inflicts on your opponent is halved unless it has Galaxy Eyes Photon Dragon as material. Neo Galaxy Eyes Tachyon Dragon was a rank 9 that took 3 level 9s to make. You can detach any materials from this card to negate the effects of all face up cards currently on the field, and your opponent cannot activate cards or effects on the field. If this card has number 107, Galaxy Eyes Tachyon Dragon as a material, it gains an effect to tribute two monsters to have this card gain three additional attacks and monsters only during each battle phase this turn. While the monsters weren't the galactic cardboard they were printing on, the XC saw meta play, especially number C107. C107 saw play in almost every deck due to attack with a spell card rank up magic the seventh one. When players draw this card normally during the draw phase, the effect is activated, making you play this card revealed. During the main phase of one of the turn, you can special summon a number XC's monster from your extra deck or graveyard that contains the numbers 101 through 107 in its name except a number C monster, then special summon a number C monster with the same number in its name as the monster summoned and use that monster as a material. It's treated as an XC summon. This card's high upside made it splashable in every deck, as having the ability to summon a card like C107 at any state in the game is tremendous. A 4500 attack beat stake that can negate all face up cards in the field and is easily accessible by one spell card is the impact of the highest level. It was a popular tactic for a while until metas got quicker, and players felt the strategy was more a gamble than consistent due to the card being a brick in your opening hand or added outside of the draw phase. So, even though this new Neo Eyes Tachyon Dragon was powerful, what made it powerful was more due to this unique rank up spell. And Prime Photon Dragon still sees play to this day due to its battle effect boost in its attack, assisting this deck in being able to OTK your opponent. It made it even better in Galaxy Eyes as they can revive it if they use GEPD as one of its materials. Galactic Charity was a new spell card. If you controlled a Galaxy XC's monster, you could discard one card to draw two, but the damage your opponent takes this turn is halved. Finally, Tachyon Chaos Hole was a new trap card. If a Galaxy XC's monster is destroyed by battle or an opponent's card effect, destroy as many face up cards your opponent controls as possible and banish them. During your draw phase, if this card is in your graveyard, you can banish this card and special summon a Galaxy Eyes XC's monster from your graveyard instead of conducting your draw phase. Both cards did have effects that could have been useful for the archetype, but took too much setting up to be considered running. Both needed a Galaxy's XC's to activate, which meant to activate them you'd have to pray that your XC's wouldn't be hit or that your plays wouldn't be interrupted. One good hand trap or a floodgate meant impending doom for the deck. Overall, even with two XC's monsters that couldn't change the game, Galaxy's was stuck in dark hole of mediocrity. Another strong XC's came to the TCG for Galaxy as archetype, but players had a different use for this card that would have Konami stop it from killing a format. Premium Gold Return of the Bling is probably the coolest name for a Premium Gold set, but so was the newest Galaxy's XC's monster, Galaxy Eyes Dark Matter Dragon. 
It needs three level 9 monsters to summon, but can be XC summoned using any galaxy's XC's monster instead. It itself can't be used as an XC's material for an XC summon, and when it's XC summoned, this card lets you send three dragon type monsters with different names from your deck to the graveyard to make your opponent banish three cards from their deck. It also lets you detach material in order to allow it to attack up to two monsters during the battle phase. Now, nothing screams fair card than giving one of the strongest types in the game a non ashable foolish burial effect and punishing your opposing player for it. Players saw how frightening this card was when combos were formed within the OCG meta. If the card just took level 9 monsters to make, this card probably wouldn't have seen played, being too difficult to summon. But thanks to the laughable requirement of a Galaxy's XC's monster for its summon, in general, that meant you'd only be using two level 8 monsters to bring this card out, and with Galaxy Eyes Tachyon Dragon and Galaxy Prime Photon Dragon at your disposal, this wasn't an issue. What made it a bigger threat was the fact that dragons were on an all-time terror of destruction thanks to the Dragon Rulers. Remember these totally thought-out, balanced cards? Alongside the Dragon Rulers, Dark Matter Dragon could send these cards for free to the grave and help you set up an OTK. The OTK was so consistent that Konami banned all the Dragon Ruler cards 10 days after Dark Matter was released in the TCG in an attempt to not have players suffer through the format. So Dark Matter Dragon was supposed to be Doesn't Matter Dragon for the rest of its lifespan. It's too bad Konami forgot that they gave dragons the strongest archetype in the game, one of the strongest XCs. Even after Dragon Rulers, this card was still putting in work as Dragon Monster cards that allowed them to be heavily utilized from the graveyard were pretty plentiful. So, though the Dragon Rulers were gone, cards like Eclipse and Wavering still ran wild, as simply sending it to the graveyard banished a dragon from your deck, and then fetched it whenever your Eclipse of Wavering was banished. It was later used in Blue Eyes, as Blue Eyes could easily place two level 8s on the field to make a Galaxy's XCs, and Dark Matter Dragon activates effect as an Arc Brave Dragon, a Morph Age Goliath, and a Dragon of their choice. When it's your opponent's standby phase, you activate Arc Brave Dragon's effect, Special Summon Goliath, locking your opponent out of Special Summon from the extra deck. January 2019 was the last time this card saw daylight as it was put on the ban list. And rightfully so. Given a free Foolish Burial that banished your opponent's cards directly from their deck, and then giving dragons a card that could set up their boards and ultimately end the game is unnecessary in Yu-Gi-Oh. And the most humiliating part of this was that Galaxy Eyes wasn't even a deck that could abuse this card. Galaxy Eyes didn't use any dragons outside of GEPD, so the most beneficial effect couldn't even be used in its own archetype. Even if this card had to be solely played by Galaxy Eyes, at best this card was just a potential 4,000 attack that could swing twice. As ridiculous as it sounds, this card had no impact on Galaxy Eyes. It was a quiet time for the archetype still. World Superstars came into the history of Galaxy Eyes in April of 2015. Four new cards now had their turn to live up to the hype. Galaxy Soldier was the first. This level 5 machine type monster allows you to special summon this card from your hand by discarding a light monster from your hand. When summoned, you can add a galaxy monster from your deck to your hand. Galaxy Eyes Cloud Dragon was level 1 light dragon monster, which could be tributed to special summon a galaxy monster from your hand or graveyard. Once per duel, if this card was in your grave, you can target a Galaxy Eyes XC's monster you control and attach it to it as a material. Galaxy Soldier didn't just see play in this deck, but also in Cyber Dragon, ABC, and Blue Eyes, as the card allows both the decks to set up the graveyards with monsters they needed. The card could also easily go into Cyber Dragon Nova, which led into Infinity due to the card being able to search out another copy of itself since it can search any galaxy monster from the deck. And since its special summon effect wasn't once per turn, you could bring out two with the greatest of ease and have an Infinity turn one. This was also the same case for it in Galaxy Eyes. However, it wasn't as consistent due to the deck having issues playing through multiple hand traps, interruptions, or floodgates, and the fact that it made affordable homes with how many times it bricked. Cloud Dragon didn't have the same luck and was sometimes run at 1 as an insurance if you needed material. Photon Stream of Destruction was a quick play spell that lets you target one monster in the field and banish it if you control a Galaxy Eyes monster, but it can only be used on your turn unless you control a Galaxy Eyes Photon Dragon. Tachyon Transmigration was the archetype's counter trap. If you control a Galaxy Eyes monster, you can activate this as a chain link 2 or higher, and negate the activation of your opponent's spell, trap, and monster effects that activate before this card in the chain and shuffle the negated cards back into their deck. You can also activate this card from your hand if you controlled a Galaxy Eyes Tachyon Dragon monster. Photon Stream of Destruction didn't really see any play in the TCG because it was too slow as only a 1 for 1 and needing a monster beyond board in order to use. Transmigration has seen some play with mixed results. The card effectively stops every card your opponent controls in the chain and then spun them back into the deck, making it difficult for your opponent to get the cards back or costing them resources. You could even catch them off guard with the card's ability to be activated from the hand if you had a Tachyon Dragon monster. That way you didn't have to worry about your powerful counter trap being removed from the field with cards that targeted your back row. However, the major fact that made this card the mixed bag of results is clearly due to it being unsearchable. No cards in the Galaxy Eyes or Photon archetype search for Tachyon cards. 
It's nice to have a strong counter trap, but how good is it when you can't get to it and have to depend on the luck of the draw to get it? The game was moving faster, and having searchable combo pieces was becoming the name of the game. Ultimately, the deck did get some strong support for its main deck from World Superstars, and got even more power for its extra deck in Cross Souls. Galaxy Eyes Full Armor Photon Dragon was a rank 8 Xyz monster with 4000 attack and defense, taking 3 level 8 monsters but could be XC summoned using a Galaxy Eyes Xyz monster, except Galaxy Eyes Full Armor Photon Dragon as a material. Once per turn, it could take 2 equipped cards equipped to it and attach it as an Xyz material. But this card was mainly used for its facts of detached material to target and pop a face up card your opponent controls. With its easy requirements, this card could easily be brought out by slapping it over one of your rank 8 Galaxy Eyes Xyz. A free pop and a 4000 beat stick is a card any deck would run and Galaxy Eyes was no different. The spell card was Galaxy Cyclone, a normal spell that targets one set spell or trap card on the field and destroys it. During your main phase, you can banish this card from your grave, except on this turn it was sent to the grave, to target a face-up spell or trap card and destroy it. Galaxy Cyclone saw a good amount of play during its release. Around this time, back row destruction was dire, with cards like Heavy Storm and Giant Trunade banned in 2010, and limited options like Mystical Space Typhoon and Night Beam being available. Galaxy Cyclone gave players another option for macro destruction, as it could be used once for dealing with set cards, and later on their next turn if you wanted to deal with pesky face up macro. Around this time, floodgates like Vanity's Emptiness saw play. Even floodgates that were at one, like Dimensional Fissure and Macro Cosmos, had players moaning and groaning at their local card shop tournaments. With Galaxy Cyclone being added to the repertoire, players could have an easier time in those matchups, whether they decide to main deck the card or side it. This card would continue to see play until its power crept out by better types of backward removal later in the TCG, like Twin Twister, Lightning Storm, and Cosmic Cyclone. Fast forward to 2016, Premium Gold Infinite Gold would be released to the TCG. Even though the set name was not as cool as Return of the Bling, what was cool was the Xyz monster, which would become a core staple on end boards for decks that could make it. Number 38, Hope Harbringer Dragon Titanic Galaxy, was a rank 8 light Xyz dragon monster with 3000 attack and 2500 defense. All you really need to know about this card is that it was a spell card negation that attached the spell card as a material. It could also detach one material to redirect an attack to it and could increase the attack power of any Xyz monster in the field by the attack points of an Xyz monster that was destroyed. Harbringer has been a dominant force in the game since its release. Spell cards are, and will always be, one of the strongest types in the game. The plethora of spell cards with game-changing effects that allow advantage like searching, graveyard abilities, and drawing power continue to skyrocket. Most cards that can put spell cards out of commission are either tedious to bring out, or outright banned because the effects cripple spells completely. Harbringer changes all of that, as decks that can make rank 8 now had a generic spell negator to utilize. The fact that it also takes the spell as a material is a plus as it could effectively stop spells that work in the graveyard. Galaxy Eyes finally had an effective first turn Xyz that interacted with your opponent's turn. However, they still couldn't compete with other meta decks, as other decks had quicker and more consistent gameplay that could stop a combo-heavy eccentric deck like Galaxy Eyes. Decks like Cosmos and Monarchs were seeing better results as their mechanics allowed them to set up their boards consistently, play through interruption easier, set up their interruptions, and even be more flexible to include other engines inside their decks to allow them to make their boards even more interactive and deadly, like Fire King Cosmo and Zulkin Monarchs. Galaxy wasn't able to compete with these decks at a high level. Dragons of Legend Unleashed came out in August of 2016. The extra deck for Galaxy Eyes continued to get strengthened with two more Xyz monsters. Galaxy Stealth Dragon was a rank 4 Dark Dragon Xyz monster that took two level 4s to make. You can detach a material from it to special summon a dragon monster from your hand and your opponent cannot target or destroy any other galaxy monsters in the field with card effects. Galaxy Eye Cypher Dragon was a rank 8 light dragon Xyz monster that took two level 8s. You can detach material to target one of your opponent's face up monsters and take control of it until the end phase. Its effects are negated, its attack becomes 3000, and its name becomes Galaxy Eye Cypher Dragon. However, you can't attack with any of the monsters except the original Galaxy Eye Cypher Dragon. Stealth didn't really see any play. The monster could summon Dragon-type monsters with its effect, meaning more than likely your only target would be GEPD. The deck also had better openings, so you probably wouldn't need to go into this card, as the Galaxy Wizard plus Expedition combo was an easy way to get GEPD and make your rank 8s. Taking control of your opponent's monsters removes an obstacle to overcome and possibly has more material to use for your plays. However, the fact that you couldn't attack with it or any other monsters except for Cypher Dragon was a tad bit disappointing as well as the fact that you probably couldn't use the monster treated as a Galaxy Eyes Cypher Dragon by its effect as an Xyz material, since cards like Full Armor and Dark Matter needed a Galaxy Eyes Xyz monster to overlay. It was also a part of the Cypher archetype, which Kite used in Zexel and focused on making Galaxy Eyes Xyz monsters. What we're trying to say is nobody touched the Cypher monsters. 
The deck was already congested with a deck that had problems searching for cards because they differentiated between Galaxy and Photon. The last thing needed was an unsearchable archetype jammed inside an already weak deck. What the deck now needs is more main deck support that can help consistency with the deck. Anyways, here's another XCs that didn't help the deck at all from Raging Tempest. Neo Galaxy Eye Cypher Dragon is a rank knight light dragon XCs that needs 3 level 9 monsters to make. If this card is a cypher card as a material, you get the additional effect to be able to attach up to 3 materials to take control of your opponent's monsters, up to the number of materials attached. You can't attack with any other monsters except this card. The monster's effects are negated and their names become Neo Galaxy Eye Cypher Dragon and the attack becomes 4500. The card is more of a difficult version of Galaxy Eye Cypher Dragon to summon and the card didn't see any play in Galaxy Eyes due to that. We move straight into the Shonen Jump promo card in 2017, getting another form of Galaxy Eye Cypher Dragon, Galaxy Eye Cypher Blade Dragon, which is a rank 9 monster that took 3 level 9s to make, yet could easily be brought out by using a rank 8 Galaxy Eye XCs monster. Once returned, you can detach a material to target one card on the field and destroy it. If this XC summon card you control is destroyed by a battle or an opponent's card effect and sent to the grave, you can target a Galaxy Eye Cypher Dragon in your graveyard and special summon it. It didn't take long for Konami to get this card correctly this time. Your Galaxy Eye Cypher Dragon could now easily become an additional pop, thanks to simply slapping this card on top. It also combos well with the other rank 8 Galaxy Eyes XCs that can be overlaid on top. You can go into Cypher to full armor, into Blade Dragon, or vice versa, getting two free pops in the process. However, with the archetype still being far from complete, the meta getting faster with pendulums in the format and links on the horizon, this deck was for sure to be forgotten and deemed unplayable especially when the support from Code of the Duelist was shown in 2017. Galaxy Worm was a level 3 light insect monster. When normal summoned while you control no other monsters, you can special summon a level 3 or lower galaxy effect monster from your deck, but its effects are negated. There were no benefits to be seen from playing this card. It only grabbed level 3 monsters in a deck revolving around level 4s and 8s, and even if you could grab a level 4 or 8, the effect was negated. This card was forgettable, and the archetype was close to being in the same boat. Surprisingly, this still wasn't the end of Konami keeping our hopes up in making Galaxy Eyes playable one day in the next set, Battles of Legend Relentless Revenge in 2019. Because the deck needed more stars and extenders, they decided even more Xyz monsters would fix the problem. Galaxy Eyes Photon Lord was a rank 8 light Xyz. Cardifacts can't destroy it if it has a Photon card as a material. Once per turn, when your opponent's monster activates its effect, you can detach material to negate the effect, and if you have a Galaxy Eyes monster's material attached to this card, destroy that card. It also has a quick effect on your opponent's turn that lets you search for a Galaxy or Photon card from your deck and add it to your hand, or as an Xyz material to this card. It did see most play in Galaxy Eyes, but was also used in Blue Eyes, Thunder Dragon, and recently Punk Gold Pride. While the main deck still suffered from a shortage of starters and inconsistencies, they got one of their best XCs to date. The deck finally had another negate to add to their arsenal. Though its first effect is gimmicky because it needs a galaxy card to destroy the negated monster, it was still impactful as having a monster be able to stop a monster, whether in hand, field, or graveyard, is a tremendous effect. It could even replenish its materials with its second effect. So all of these XCs are great. So could we get a starter now? Unfortunately, no but they did give the archetype more extenders, which had a saying, close enough. More main deck monsters were given in Legendary Duelist, White Dragon Abyss. Two monsters, one spell and a trap were made for the archetype. Photon Vanisher was a level 4 light monster that can be special summoned once per turn by its effect by controlling a galaxy or photon monster. When this card is special summoned, you can add a GEPD from your deck to your hand. When this card is used as an Xyz material, the Xyz monster gains the effect to banish any monster destroyed by battle. Photon Orbital was a level 4 light monster that could equip itself to one of your Photon or Galaxy monsters during the main phase. And you can send this equipped card to the graveyard to add a Photon or Galaxy card from your deck to your hand. Star Leech Photon Blast Dragon was their newest rank 4 Xyz that took two level 4 monsters to make. When Xyz summoned, you can special summon a Photon monster from your hand. Your opponent couldn't target or destroy any monsters with an attack over 2000 with card effects and on your opponent's turn, its quick effect allows you to target one GEPD that is banished from your grave and special summon it. The spell Photon Hand was a normal spell that to take control of one of your opponent's monsters if you control a galaxy or photon monster by paying a thousand life points. But you can only take XC's monsters if you don't control a GEPD. Finally, Photon Change was a continuous trap which would be sent to the graveyard in the second standby phase after activation. Once per turn, you can send one galaxy or photon monster to the graveyard to activate one of these effects, or both if you send a GEPD. Either special summon a photon monster from your deck with a different name than the extent card, or add a photon card from your deck to your hand. Now, while this spell was too gimmicky and the trap was too slow, Vanisher and Orbital were superb extenders who helped dig through the deck and get key pieces quicker, giving the deck a bit more strength not to get shut down by a single hand trap. So, though the deck once again didn't get a starter for the new format, they did get more extenders that brought a heavy amount of value that made your plays align, unless you completely bricked. 
drawing two GEBDs, extenders and eight monsters of the field, and had nothing to put on the field. You're not a true Galaxy Eyes player unless you curse under your breath when you see your hand. What was also needed was a way for Galaxy Eyes to play in the Link format. With Master Rule 4 was in effect, decks that summon multiple non-Link monsters were, for the most part, crippled. So not many picked up the deck, knowing that this deck was Xyz focused. There's no way they'll make a Link just for Galaxy to operate before giving you starters. Immediately after Legendary Duelist, they got a Link before a starter in Soul Fusion. Galaxy Eye Soul Flare Dragon was a Link 2 light monster that took two light monsters, including a Monster 2000 plus attack. When Link summoned to target one Galaxy or Photon monster in your graveyard and add it back to your hand. During your opponent's main phase, you can discard a Photon and a Galaxy card, or one GEPD from your hand to target and pop one of your opponent's spells about monsters. Galaxy Brave was also added to the list of new support. It was another extender that could be special summoned by revealing a Photon monster. If special summoned this way, you can target a Photon or Galaxy monster in your graveyard and make this card's attack and defense and level the same as a targeted monster. Galaxy Cleric was a level 4 that can be attached as material to a Photon or Galaxy monster if it's in your hand. If normal or special summoned, you can target 5 Photon and or Galaxy monsters in your grave, shove back to the deck, and draw 2 cards. The spell card Galaxy Trans was a normal spell that targets a Photon monster from your grave and special summons it, and a Galaxy monster from your deck by paying 2000. Their effects are negated, their attacks become 2000, and you're locked into normal summoning or special summoning Photon or Galaxy monsters. Finally, Eternal Galaxy was a normal trap that rounded up the new support. If you control the Photon or Galaxy monster, you can target Xyz monsters you control. Special summon a Galaxy or Photon Xyz monsters that's 4 ranks higher than the target by using that target as an Xyz material. Soul Flare was a welcome addition to the deck. Being an archetype link that recycled resources was a board interruption during your opponent's turn, and most importantly, gave the deck zones to work with and put multiple Xyz on the board. Galaxy Brave was yet another extender to utilize and possibly open with on your first turn if you have a Photon monster in hand. Clear could be utilized as both Xyz materials or a built-in Pot of Avarice. To sweeten the deal even more, Galaxy Trance was a built-in free Galaxy Extra Deck monster for the low cost of 2,000 life points, grabbing new materials not just from your grave, but special summoning out any Galaxy monster from your deck for free. So, the deck had a Link monster and has access to make rank eggs like water, extenders for days, and searchers for days. Why couldn't this deck succeed in the TCG? It's not like it was missing the one thing players have been begging for non-stop, like, I don't know, maybe some starters? It was nice to have a plethora of extenders and search power from here to the Shadow Realm. None of that matters if those cards need starters on the field to be played. Though you had Vanisher, Orbital, or Brave, they were all great cards that continue your plays, but they could easily become nightmarish bricks in your hand if you didn't have the correct starter to get them on the field. Also, though the deck could play through one hand trap, knowing when to disrupt the deck with interruptions completely hindered it, and caused underwhelming boards due to not having consistent starters. Also, the New Age hand traps are a perfect bane to this deck. A Dimension Shifter completely made linking and Xyz monsters frightening by having anything sent to the graveyard banished instead. And Nibiru was almost a guaranteed alive card due to how many extenders and resources you had to use to go through a full combo. This has been a bane the deck has continued to deal with to this day. Dual Power would later give them one piece of support in 2019. Photon Advancer was a level 4 light warrior. Once per turn, if you control another Photon monster, you can special summon this card from your hand. It gains 1000 attack if you control another Photon monster. Once again, another extender was given to the archetype. Yet this one was widely ignored due to the restriction needing a Photon monster to summon it. It was easy to leave this card out in a deck with issues of bricking already without enough starters. The starterless woes continued in Chaos Impact. Another card was made for extra decks, and this one was a trap that, for some reason, interacted with Tachyon Dragon. Galaxy's Satellite Dragon was a Dark Link 2 monster that required two Dragon monsters to be Link Summoned. During the battle phase, you can banish this card from the field or graveyard to target a number of Xyz monsters you control, whose original type and attribute are Light and Dragon. That monster will gain attack equal to the value of its number in its name times 100 until the end of the battle phase. But all battle damage done by that monster is halved. During the end phase of your opponent's turn, you can select one card in your deck and place it on top of your deck. Tachyon Spiral Galaxy was a normal trap card that could target one Dragon Galaxy Xyz monster and make it indestructible in battle and unaffected by card effects until the end of your turn. If you control a Galaxy Eyes Tachyon Dragon monster, you can activate this card from your hand. Now, it doesn't take a Galaxy Eyes player to know both these cards are too gimmicky to play. Satellite Dragon's boost effect is almost pointless, since most of the time, Galaxy Eyes can OTK with Prime Photon Dragon and have monsters that can swing over almost anything in the game. Having Xyz monsters whose attacks powers can range from 2500 to 4500. Tachyon had the upside of being searchable and granted immunity from your opponent's cards, but it couldn't protect some key cards like Photon Lord, which was a warrior type monster. At this point, it was ridiculous how the starter issue wasn't addressed. It wouldn't be addressed in Legendary Duelist Season 2 either, as Galaxy Eyes got the Oprah treatment, 
where you get an extender again. Nothing was better than receiving yet another extender to celebrate Master Bowl 5, lifting the need for Link Monsters to make extra deck spaces. Galaxy Eye's Afterglow Dragon was a level 8 dragon monster. If you control a Galaxy monster, you can spell some of this card from your hand in defense position. If it's detached as a material to activate the effect of an XC's monster it's attached to, you can take a GEPD from your deck or hand and either special summon it or attach it as an XC's monster to a card you control. If this effect was activated in the battle phase, double the attack of all number XC's monsters you control. One thing is for certain. If a Prime Photon Dragon has this as a material, you win the game. It also was a good target for cards like Trans and Expedition, making having a rank in the field even easier than before. The conditions to summon it weren't too bad, but it was still irritating as you now needed a Galaxy Eyes monster to summon it, limited to only being an effective extender when you already have Galaxy Eyes XEs or GPD himself on the field. Great Value Blue Eyes Alternative remains a staple inside the deck to this day. You know what else they didn't have enough of? More XCs monsters, including in Ghost of the Past, Galaxy Eye Cypher X Dragon was a rank 10 XCs requiring two level 10 monsters to make, but can be substituted using a Cypher Dragon monster as a material. You can detach two materials or prevent your opponent from targeting light monsters until your opponent's turn ends. Once per turn, during the standby phase, you can return a rank 9 XCs monster to your extra deck to special summon that monster from the extra deck using this card as an XCs material. This card was mainly used for its first effect, which grants protection as you're not likely to use a lot of rank 9s except if you overlay into another XCs. Players would use this card's effect, then continue on their combos as they were free from the effects that target, ranging from hand traps like in Perm or monsters that targeted your monsters. However, most of the time your opponent could get around this issue easily as targeting effects were few to none, as the meta in 2021 had cards like Red Eyes Dark Dragoon, Dark Ruler No More, and Lightning Storm that could get around the need to target cards to get rid of them. Overall, cheap protection is still better than none, and the card is run as a base part of its combo to the end board. King's Court gave the archetype two new cards. The quick play spell, Hyper Galaxy, lets you tribute one monster with 2,000 more attack, except GEPD, to target one monster your opponent controls for 2,000 more attack and tribute it. If you do, special summon a GEPD from your hand deck or graveyard. The Eternal Bond was a trap card that could target any number of photon monsters in your grave and special summon them, but their effects were negated. During the main phase, you can banish this card from your grave to take control of one photon monster your opponent controls. That monster gains the combined attack of all photon monsters you currently control, but you can't declare an attack except with the monster that you took control of. Hyper Galaxy wasn't the most impressive piece of board removal, but it warranted play with its ability to remove a monster on the field with a non-destruction effect. The same, however, couldn't be said for Eternal Bond. A trap that only special summon negated monsters back to the field was way too slow for an effect in 2021. On top of that, the graveyard effect rarely popped up because hearing of a Galaxy Eyes mirror match was rare compared to spotting a four leaf clover or even a Galaxy Eyes player. The effect was too anime esque, and the card was used as a coaster for your drinks. The deck was also close to being used as a coffee coaster. Even with Master Rule 5, the deck's lack of starters, interruptible combos, and bricking syndrome continued throughout the 2020s. In 2023, Galaxy Eyes players got another wave of support to cheer for in Photon Hypernova. Photon Emperor was a new level 8 monster. When sent to the graveyard from anywhere but the field while you control a galaxy or photon monster, you can special summon this card in defense position. Once per turn, after you normally special summon this card, you can normal summon one light monster during your main phase in addition to your normal summoner set. Galaxy Summoner was a level 4 monster that, when this card is normal or special summoned, you can target and special summon one galaxy or photon monster from your graveyard in face-up defense position. Once per turn, you can target one of the light monster to make it level 4 until the end of the turn. Galacti Karibo was a level 1 monster that's always treated as a galaxy monster. When your opponent declares an attack, you can discard this card to special summon a GEPD from your hand or deck, change the attack target to it, and then attach this card to an XC's monster in the field as an XC's material. And if your galaxy or photon monster is destroyed by your opponent's card or battle or effect, you can banish this card from your graveyard instead. Galaxy Photon Dragon was a rank 4 light XC's monster. Other light monsters you control gain 500 attack while this card's on the field. Once per turn, you can detach a material from this card to take a galaxy or photon monster and either add it to your hand or send it to the graveyard from your deck. You can also change the level of a light monster that's been special summoned to your side of the field to 4 or 8 once per turn. And to finish up all the new monsters, their new boss monster, number C69, Neo Galaxy Eyes Prime Photon Dragon, was a rank 8 that took 3 level 8 light monsters, but could be actually summoned by using Galaxy Eyes Prime Photon Dragon's material instead. At the start of the battle phase, you can detach materials from this card to give it the ability to make up to 3 attacks on monsters during the battle phase. If it has a GEPD as a material, it becomes unaffected by opponent card effects and gains attack equal to the combined level and ranks of its attached materials times 100. The main spell that outshined all the rest was Galaxy 100. This continuous spell sends one photon or galaxy monster from your deck to the graveyard. If a GPD is special summoned, you can look at your opponent's extra deck and either banish one card from it or special summon a number monster from it to your field. Numeron Creation was a spell card, which is always treated as a galaxy card. 
If there are three or more light dragon monsters whose original attacks are 3,000 or more, you can special summon a number X these monster and attach this card to it as a material. Photon Time Stop is the last card introduced to this set. This trap takes one Photon or Galaxy Continuous Spell slash Trap card and can be placed in your hand or face up on the field. When this card is destroyed by your opponent's card effect on their turn, and you control a GPD or an Xyz monster with it as a material, you can activate this card's effect to end your opponent's turn. 100 wasn't necessarily the best card to use as a starter. Still, it helps set up plays with Photon Emperor and Galaxy Summoner. Plus, the fact that you can get information from your opponent's extra deck and either pluck a card from the extra deck to get it banished, or even summon a monster from it. The new additions made using your graveyard as a resource to crank out level 4s or 8 Xyz monsters a lot easier. C69 guaranteed an even more successful OTK, as if you needed it to be any cleaner to punch up your opponent for game. The issue now was how it stacked up to the meta in 2023, and as you can see in the name of this video, they didn't quite deliver. 2023 had every type of weakness this deck couldn't overcome. Monsters that manipulated graveyards, hand traps stronger than before that made sure your turn was a set one pass, and floodgates that slowed the game down to a snail's pace. The meta was also swarmed with dominant decks like Kashtira and Tulamits, which each respectively had ways to either put up multiple interruptions to disrupt your turn, either being a Rise Heart banishing the key parts of your combo on field or face down, getting all your graveyard resources shuffled away with Keldo, or eating Bestial Druid Swarm to take away the GEPD that you needed. The deck may have gotten a new type of start and plenty of extenders, but now it's easy to stop choke points, hinder the deck from becoming a threat of the meta. That would be this deck's sad tale, even with this newest searcher. In June of 2023, Battle of Legends Monstrous Revenge gave us Photon Jumper, another level 4 light monster. When your opponent declares an attack, you can spell some of this card and end the battle phase, but your next battle phase will be skipped. If this card is sent to the graveyard, you can add a Photon or Galaxy Spell Trap card from your deck to your hand. Jumper gave the deck another card to boost its consistency in retrieving pieces. What makes Jumper stand out is that it can grab both Photon and Galaxy spells and traps that cards like Galaxy Wizard couldn't do. Now, players didn't have to worry about missing their important spells and traps, missing that one piece due to your multiple options and searchers. The spell card, Numbers Last Hope, was always treated as a Galaxy card, and by paying half your life points, you could target two monsters in your graveyard and spell to summon them with their effects negated. Immediately after that, you can XC summon using exactly those two monsters one number monster from your extra deck but you can only special summon once more from your extra deck this turn. This card is mainly used as a secondary option if your other spells like Expedition and Trance aren't seen or get disrupted by other means. In summary, it's a contingency plan in case everything else goes awry. To finish up this long video on why this deck you love sucks, Maze Millennia contained a Photon card, which was hilariously a starter. Photon Delta Wing was a level 4 light monster. When normal summoned, you can special summon another Photon Delta Wing from your hand or deck in defense position, and you're locked into light monsters for the rest of this turn. Your opponent also can't attack while you control a Photon Delta Wing. A mixed bag of a starter. On one hand, you have a monster that can easily make a rank 4 like Galaxy Photon Dragon and continue your combo. On the other hand, this starter easily eats up your normal summon and only gets its effect off its normal summon, making it hard to choose between summoning this card or another more versatile starter like Galaxy Wizard, whose effect is more versatile and has opened up various combos to the deck. While a starter with Wing would grant you a Galaxy Photon Dragon combo that could lead to a board of Galaxy Lord and Harbringer, the other board could offer more, like the addition of Soul Flare Dragon and the protection of Cypher X. However, that board is considered inconsistent due to the various disruptors in the game that could stop the deck. Delta Wing may be a new starter, but it doesn't help with the common boards that you try to establish with Galaxy Eyes. Depending on what play you choose, you suffer from the greater of two evils. Would you want more consistent combos that don't have a strong end board? Or do you go for a bigger board that takes up so many pieces and is more interruptible? It's all up to the player's preference on how they want to get scrapped against Rescue Ace. With that, we now come to the end of Galaxy support. This isn't a knock to say the deck is completely Galactic Garbo. The archetype has some of the strongest rank 8 XCs in the game that can run through your opponent just like how Kite used them to run through Yuma in the series. The plethora of lines you can go through gives you a variety for your starting plays, and even though the hand traps can take away from your bigger plays, they can still get you to your big body monsters. The deck is also really strong on a small scale level. Seeing Solid play in Duel Links and even being a tier 0 deck there, and even seeing some play Master Duel, and of course can still use some wins at your locals or regional if you eat your veggies and drink your space milk. However, it still goes through the syndrome its father, Blue Eyes White Dragon, goes through starting with the deck having to run a brick far past its prime. Being a 3000 beat stick who doesn't do anything alone is an annoying reality that Galaxy Eyes players must go through. GEPD gives no benefits outside of being an XC's material needed for effects. 
and its own effect is going minus two using 2000 plus attack monsters to special summon itself from your hand with a terrible target effect that's only effective against XCs. And it couldn't even be impactful that most XCs have effects that are more powerful than it. Secondly, the starter to extender ratio is abysmal. At best, the deck has three different starters with Wizard, Soldier, and possibly Delta Wing and Galaxy 100. But with two of them using a normal summon, one of them needing to own a light monster to special summon it, and another being a continuous spell that was begging to be asked or drolled, they weren't strong starters that you'd see in other meta decks. With that being the case, your extenders can be dead in hand for turns on end because of the dependency on other cards to be useful. Need a Vanisher? You need a Photon or Galaxy monster in the field. Afterglow? You need a Galaxy Eyes monster in the field. There are so many pieces with so few starters that it can cause you to not only have off-kilter hands, but even when you get the cards you need, you have to use so many resources to get to your end board that Dark Willow No More, Droplets, or any deck that can play through through interruptions can just beat. It's tragic to see how much effort Konami has put into Galaxy Eyes, only to see a minimal return. Galaxy Eyes has the honor of having a cool fan base, appealing art, and a Photon Lord worth $20 to $30. Until it gets good starters, however, and the countless efforts to try to make this deck a contender start to show, our Blue Eyes Light Dragon sails galactically into the sometimes failed cards and mechanics Hall of Fame.